Good evening and welcome to Talk Pixar. I'm Neville Choi. This week, Papua New Guinea was host of the 8th Summit of African, Caribbean and Pacific Heads of State and Government. At the opening of the meeting, Prime Minister and Chair of this summit, Peter O'Neill, welcomed the 78 member states of the ACP. With the theme, Repositioning the ACP Group to Respond to the Challenges of Sustainable Development, much of the discussions focused on achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Deli Waigeno has this report. Port Mosby is slowly but surely becoming visible on the world stage as host city of a number of regional and international events. This week, Papua New Guinea's capital city received the heads of state and governments from the African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states. One such distinct leader was the President of Zimbabwe, Dr. Robert Mugabe, who arrived on Air Zimbabwe on Sunday, 29th of May. The ACP group is made up of 79 member states, all of them except Cuba, as signatories to the Cotonou Agreement, which binds them to the European Union. This year marks 40 years since the signing of the Georgetown Agreement, by which the ACP states committed themselves to a relationship with the EU. The Cotonou Partnership Agreement will end in 2020, and the ACP is now reflecting on the future of the organization. In 2012, the ACP met in Equatorial Guinea for groundbreaking discussion on the future of the ACP. It was agreed that the ACP group should be transformed so as to remain relevant and continue serving their interests, depending their solidarity, and enhancing South-South cooperation. President Mugabe, who was representative of the African group, said at the opening of the summit that ACP countries need to be financially independent and move away from development aid. Honorable Prime Minister, we note that development finance has constituted a critical lifeline of the ACP-EU partnership for over 40 years, but has regrettably created a typical donor-recipient relationship and the reviled dependency syndrome. While we have continued to be producers and exporters of primary products, while we are appreciative of such provided financial support, we have continued to receive from our European Union partners, it has increasingly become clear that financial self-sufficiency should be our new modus operandi as we drive our efforts towards the mobilization of our resources, aimed at a more robust and beneficial development thrust, prioritizing our collective interest as developing countries. He also said that the summit should mandate all their ministers of finance to find funding options for the new organization as the ACP regions are endowed with a vast array of natural resources including flora and fauna, gold, oil, marine resources, land and highly educated citizens, yet continue to remain on the margins of the value chains. We cannot continue to be spectators while our primary commodities are driving an economic boom in the North and West. In his remarks, Prime Minister and Chair of the 8th Summit, Peter O'Neill, asked the summit to consider the Pacific Island nations in relations to climate change and its effects. He said international progress on addressing climate change has been too slow and the ACP must insist that the Paris Agreement of 2015 be fully implemented. We must demand nations that they, are, that they are the main contributors to global warming. Reducing emissions is a priority of many of these nations and it must be done in the shortest possible time. 
He also expressed frustration at not seeing change in ACP economic relations, even though it is one of the biggest international groupings. I strongly believe that ACP group must rise to the occasion and be seen by its people and the world uh, to be an effective and relevant institution that has positive dynamics to making a real difference to the lives of our people. At the end of the two-day summit, the leaders agreed that the theme of repositioning the ACP group in order to respond to the challenges of sustainable development was timely and relevant in light of the current global political and economic trends. The summit has received the report from the Council of Ministers. And of course, this report has highlighted at great length the work of ACP ministers have done since the last summit. This summit commends the ministers for their diligent uh, work that they've uh, carried out, and this continues to inspire the ACP group so that we can do more uh, for the benefit of all our citizens. The summit discussed the need for the ACP group of states to be financially self-reliant. The summit discussed and agreed on the way forward especially in uh, also achieving financial autonomy uh, by, of the ACP group itself. Uh, in that regard, it is uh, agreed that we will establish a long-term endowment fund. And uh, of course, that fund is going to uh, try and make sure that uh, we have financial autonomy for the ACP group. The summit also received and deliberated on the eminent persons group report and they agreed that the report needed further reflections through the six regions and refer back to the ministers for analysis and implementation. Former president of Nigeria, uh, Chief Obasanjo and his, uh, his members have submitted an outstanding work. They've uh, presented a very detailed report. Uh, on the way forward of uh, ensuring that uh, uh, it is ensuring the importance of ACP group uh, so that we become relevant in the international arena uh, and it's responsive to the uh, needs of the member countries. On peace and security, leaders agreed that political stability, peace and security are key prerequisites for economic social development. Leaders expressed commitment to ensuring peaceful environments and the strengthening and solidarity amongst ACP states. The summit also agreed on the importance of restructuring the ACP Secretariat to ensure it remains effective in its operations. Mr. O'Neill believed the summit inspired the leaders to take significant steps in their approach to shape and transform the ACP into a dynamic intercontinental group. As chair of the 8th Summit, Mr. O'Neill thanked the distinguished visitors for coming to Papua New Guinea. It is uh, certainly an honor and privilege uh, to have hosted you in our country. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed your stay here with us and certainly look forward to receiving you. Uh, and of course, if you wish to come back, you are always most welcome, either for official or personal business. The next summit of ACP Heads of State and Government will be held in 2018. Welcome back to Talk Pixar. Still on the ACP summit, there were other meetings that were held on the sidelines of the conference. One such meeting was between the ACP Secretariat and Technical Center for Agriculture and Rural Cooperation, or the CTA. Director of the CTA, Michael Hailu, said given the dominance of agriculture in the economies of most ACP states, increased productivity in the sector will be a key driver and a critical component of inclusive growth. The side event on the sustainable agriculture highlighted the pressing need for major action to be taken on food and agriculture globally, the ACP states included. Director of CTA Michael Hailu said the need to adapt agricultural systems to respond to climate change and extreme weather events has never been more urgent.
Given the dominance of agriculture in the economies of most ACP countries, increased productivity will be a key driver and a critical component of sustainable growth. It was discussed that as a source of employment for the majority of ACP populations, agriculture was crucial for poverty reduction and sustainable development. With a large number of young people entering the labor market each year and not finding jobs easily, more effort should be exerted to make agriculture attractive and remunerative for youth as a career opportunity. It was also discussed that transforming agriculture as an engine for growth in the ACP will require significant and well-coordinated investments by the public and private sectors. Of course, there are lots of challenges that's facing ACP groups in, in the area of agriculture. I will just briefly mention uh, two or three of them. One is the need to produce more, better, and affordable food. The second one is to create inclusive and sustainable growth while coping with climate change and population growth. The Deputy Prime Minister of Namibia said long-term innovative financing that's responsive to the needs of both large-scale and smallholder farmers in a one-size-fits-all is not a solution. She said smart agriculture production is needed. This requires redoubling of efforts with appropriate policy response to tackle the challenges within the short term and medium term. A multifaceted smart approach which takes on board the public sector, communities with particular reference to women and youth, the private sector and the international community is required. It was discussed that women play a critical role in agricultural systems as producers, providing up to 40% of the agricultural labor force globally. In some parts of Africa, women provide up to 80% of the agricultural labor force. Women contribute to the labor force and are central to ensuring household nutrition and driving entrepreneurship as well as demand in the sector. Executive Director of the PNG Women in Business, Janet Sape, shared the experiences of women in Papua New Guinea. More of the, uh, the population in Papua New Guinea lives in the rural areas, more than 80%. They are subsistence farmers, most of them are illiterate, and also uh, they do not have uh, proper knowledge of um, uh, proper uh, farming. They are mostly subsistence farmers for consuming because they don't have access to markets, and um, they don't have, um, it's, it's very expensive doing um, business in agriculture as there is no uh, uh, much support. It's a very, very tough, a challenging environment that we face in Papua New Guinea. So uh, my appeal to you today, uh, United Nations, as we, you are here, and the uh, ACP that you are here, we, we, the women of Papua New Guinea and the people of Papua New Guinea need that support. Given the dominance of agriculture in the economy of most ACP countries, the panel discussed that increased productivity in the sector will be a key driver and a critical component of inclusive growth. The panel discussed the necessity for developing sustainable agri-food systems in the face of climate change challenges and share experiences and lessons in advancing agriculture transformation in ACP countries through public-private partnerships and multi-stakeholder alliances. The importance of mobilizing domestic and international financial resources was also noted. On a more subtle note, the ACP Summit also created an avenue for Papua New Guinea to exhibit the value and diversity of its culture and traditions, the beauty in our artwork and in our flora and fauna. It was also a chance to rectify PNG's general image in the eyes of the global community and give at least a glimpse of what PNG really is. Linda Baba O'Neill, wife to PNG's Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, made quite the impression on the spouses of ACP heads of states and government who were in Port Moresby for the summit. Melissi Govira with this story.
the women accompanied by their host toured various locations and events in Port Moresby. The objective, Babao said, was to give the women the opportunity to experience PNG in a glimpse. I think because many of our, our spouses are here in Port Moresby alone, and Port Moresby is not a very good reflection of our beautiful country as a whole. So what we tried to do was make sure that there were events that could give a snapshot of, of what Papua New Guinea is like. So. The women, she said, were taken to various places, including the parliament, to give them more insight of our culture. We started off at the uh, nature park and uh, talking about conservation and all our wildlife, um, wildlife uh, flowers, you know, and um, it really brought to life what Papua New Guinea is, mm -hmm. some of our traditions, our cultures, our food. Um, the following day, we then went to the National Museum so we could give them more insight into our cultures and the diversity of our country. And um, then that was followed by a beautiful parliament which incorporates all our culture, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, and uh, today, we decided that we would show the future of our country and, and what I personally have at heart, which is the education of our girls. So we went to Caritas and, and uh, were able to sample some of the foods that they make and, and also um, some of the skills that they've acquired through technical schools. And so I, I think that uh, opened the eyes of many of our spouses. Um, followed by that, of course, women empowerment means being financially independent and what better way to do it but to have the markets here and, and the markets run by our women. So. MTV was able to catch up with the ladies at the Holiday Inn's Cassowary Park for a mini craft market showcasing an array of PNG's raw handiwork. Traditionally, they were met by dancers from the central province as they made their procession into the park area. The arts and craft market was facilitated by the P&G Women in Business Foundation, who had put in a tremendous effort to create an impressive display of handicrafts for the ACP leaders' spouses in a day's notice. Founder of the PNG WIB Foundation, Janet Sape, treated the ladies to a walk through the diverse display of arts and crafts women produced independently. The local women showed pride in explaining to them the significance of some of the artwork they displayed. The innovative adoption of modern techniques and styles in the craft the women produced spoke loudly of their creativity and potential of the arts and craft business for P&G. Ladies are um, very creative, you know, in designing some of the artifacts work that they did. And um, as one of the um, Prime Minister's spouse, I'm so thankful. Like, I'm very happy to see, you know, ladies working together. Women like Eva Ani have ventured into the business of cosmetic products, one that really caught the attention of our visitors. These are With all virgin natural. coconut oil, They're, that's natural. That's very natural what's in here. Others displayed clay crafts, jewelry, billumware, and the indigenous Mary blouse, which has evolved with time into an array of styles. Kathy Wariapa, whose business went by the name Siwakama Arts and Crafts, makes billums and bamboo crafts for a living. A small company is registered, like Siwakama Arts and Crafts. I normally do this one every Saturday. It's like uh, there are four markets, four consecutive markets for a month. Meanwhile, Local entrepreneurs were given the opportunity to market PNG's raw potential to the international community over at the convention center where the ACP summit was held. A couple with the drive to market PNG artifacts made by people much like Wariapa put out quite a collection. David Ruape and his wife Dana are the founders of Authentic PNG a business dedicated to selling an assortment of invaluable artworks they collect from all around PNG. Uh, most of our stuff we get it right from the rural areas. Uh, for instance, uh, I can give you examples of the clay pots that come all the way from Kanyantu. 
these are many of these artists have never been to a hard school, but it's inborn in them the abilities and the skills they have. The artifacts they sold ranged from billums to clay crafts, wooden carvings and framed metal artworks to name a few. Through their business, the couple invests their time in collecting artworks from local craftspeople around the country who aren't able to market them on their own. Like what we're doing, we cannot uh, uh, expect others to represent our culture. Uh, true representation of any culture, for that matter for Papua New Guinea, can only be done by Papua New Guineans. At the moment, their main focus is to regain ownership of the market as Papua New Guineans and to provide an avenue for local craftspeople whose artworks go unrecognized. It was, however, encouraging to see local artists emerging from the shadows during the ACP summit to market their potential. Here's where we end Talk Pixar for this week. You can catch a replay of this show on Wednesday evening, or you can go online at www.mtv.com.pg and click on the Talk Pixar tab to see this show or any of our previous ones. And until next time, I'm Neville Choi. And this has been MTV's Talk Pixar. Good night. <laughs>